It is good to have everyone here this morning. And uh, as we begin this day, uh, we need to say again, Happy New Year. Brand new year. And uh, the, to actually be in church on the first day of the year is always special. And uh, here in our in-person service, uh, we just concluded our time of the Holy Sacrament, which was very, very special. It's always, it's always unique here, and we make it a very powerful part of our service. And we've also, uh, we've also done something every year for, oh goodness, the past number of years. It looks like it goes all the way back to, uh, to 2009. And uh, our, our folks here in the sanctuary all have a stone. And I sent out an email that instructed you to find a stone. So those of you at home, uh, hopefully you have a stone with you. If you do not, pause the video. Go find a stone. It can be small. It can be large. Some of you up north, you may have to be a little creative in trying to find a stone because a lot of those could be under some of that white stuff. It did not snow here this morning, so it made it a little easier for us. But I trust that you have a stone in your possession because you will, you will be told what to do with it here just shortly. You know, when anytime we come into a new year, we, we have last year's thoughts. And I'm wondering how many people have made a New Year's resolution. I actually spoke with someone this week. They said, I have a New Year's resolution. So what is that? They said, I am not going to make a New Year's resolution. <laughs> now you can have regrets, you can have hopes, you can have plans, dreams, you can, the, the whole year is laid out in front of you and it's just amazing what our minds can really get caught up in when we think about where we've been and where we're going. A lot of things come to mind with the approach and the realization of a brand new year. This passage that I'm going to read here in a moment points us in the right direction and gives us guidance for the coming year. We focus our lives on Christ, we celebrate what Jesus did on our behalf, and on this day, we're going to be taking a closer look at our witness, the race that we run, and the burdens in our lives. So now that you have your stone, clutch it closely, hold it in your hand as we proceed. We're going to be considering what that stone means, what it re represents to you, and our whole focus this morning is to lie aside our weights. So looking at Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3, it's going to pop up on the screen in front of you, and it reads this way. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Here, we begin to understand that God makes us aware of witnesses. Witnesses. People that are watching our life. People that see what we do, hear what we say, watch our reactions. They watch our lives. So those are actual eyeball on us kind of people day to day. But my Bible tells me 
that we also entertain angels unaware. That God sends angels to watch over us, to surround us, to give us encouragement, to give us protection. I'm told that every time we pray, God dispatches an angel to meet that need. Can you imagine what the heavenly highway must look like at any given moment? So God makes us aware of those witnesses. God can also rid our lives of sin that can really easily get us off track. Now, we all know what sin is, don't we? Don't we know what that is? You people understand that sin has a unique placement of one letter in the middle, and what is it? I. Sin is all self-centeredness. This is what I have, what I want, what I need. But sin overall is a disabler. It is a distractor. It is a destroyer. And sin is only erased by surrender through the faith in Christ. Sin does a lot of damage. If you don't think that that's true, read the news. You hear of everything that's going on around us. You hear of murders. You hear of war. You hear of pestilence. You hear of all of these things. And people say, well, God brings on all of that pestilence. No, we did that ourselves. God did not create this world full of disease. <laughs> Good old Adam. He tried to blame his wife which wasn't a good thing. But Adam and Eve chose to turn their back on God and sin got a foothold in our world. And because of that, we find that there's thorns, there's thistles, there's pestilence, there's death. Ladies, there is now pain in childbirth. Can you imagine having children with no pain? And yet you read, God's pronouncement after the fall of humanity and you see now what we have to put up with because humanity fell. Sin can get us off track. But with all of that negativity, we need to understand that God gives us an ability. He gives us an ability and we're told that he gives us an ability to run. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't run as fast as I used to. I don't even run as nobly as I used to, nor do I run quite as coordinated as I used to. I remember the time when I could actually run and judge my steps to the perfect step timing to be able to clear a hurdle. I suspect that nowadays, I probably wouldn't get my steps timed out quite right. And thank heavens those hurdles tip when you hit them because I would probably run right through them. But God says he gives us the ability to run, but we are being given the ability to run with patience. Now, doesn't that sound a little odd to you? If you're going to run, doesn't that sound like something that you have to be impatient about? That you have to be deliberate about? That you have to be hurrying about? But it says with patience. Patience. But in reality, when we're being told that we can run the race with patience, it means to stay the course. I don't know about you, but there have been times this past year that I really thought about just pulling off the road. How in the world am I going to keep my encouragement up? How am I going to keep going? What am I going to feed my soul on? How am I going to stay encouraged? How am I going to finish the course that God has laid out for me? And I'm sure that you've had some of the same feelings. So, if we are to run, the 
The passage also says the run that is set before us. Before us. Not the road that's behind. There are those who would really like to turn around and go back and revisit. <laughs> that's not what the passage says. To run the race that is before us and not be expected to run backwards. It is the course also that he has laid out, not the one that we have charted. Another little fine print there that you need to pay attention to. But also to run the race with a finish in mind. Every race is going to get finished. Do you know that? Everybody finishes a race. You say, oh, no, I disagree. No, I, I, let, me, let me tell you how that works. You're either going to find a finish line and you're going to cross it and you say, I finished. <laughs> you might run out of gas and you put her to a stop off onto the berm of the road and the race is done for you at that point if you're trying to run the laps and keep up with everyone else the race for you is over when you run out of gas does not say that you can't refuel and pick up where you left off always remember the gospel means good news and there are always options but the finish that we have in mind in our case we think when we hear crossing the finish line don't we tend to think about heaven isn't that what we focus on we say oh one of these days one of these days i'm going to be there oh my no more rent mortgage utility bills doctor's appointments all of that stuff that that goes hand in hand with just being a part of life in this world. So we're given an ability. God gives us the ability to run. It's not what we can do. It's what he can accomplish through us because of the strength that he gives us. But God directs our attention towards Jesus. Always. The author and finisher of our faith, our faith's designer, if you will. And we are to consider Jesus. That's what this, this passage says. That we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates, perfects our faith. That's what the passage said. Consider him, his endurance, his steadfastness. And his determination, even in the face of all the opposition and threats. All of those that wanted to see him dead. The race that he completed and won. The race that he completed and won for us. Because of his running that race and finishing his course, dying on a cross for our sin, which is why we celebrate the sacrament, to remember him. He completed and won so that we could complete and win. God knows that we all face burdens or Waits. He knows the type of burdens that we all carry. Those are not hidden from God. He knows our pressures. He knows our priorities and our own agendas. So right now I want you to look at your stone, wherever you are, whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're at home. I want you to look at your stone. Now those of you at home may or may not have the ability of being able to compare it to the stone of the person there with you. If you're by yourself, well, you're just going to have to look it over. If you're with someone, compare your stone to the person next to you. 
Do you notice that no two are exactly alike? Some are larger, some are smaller, some are thick, some are fat, some are smooth, some are rough, some are different colors. Mine has lines on it, and it even has a crack kind of running through it. What does that ever depict my life last year? It's just, just kind of a little wilted and weary here that's been through the mill. But I also want you to know that it's cold and it's lifeless. There is no life in this stone. In order for you to take it with you, you have to pick it up and carry it. That's what you've got to do. You cannot set it down and expect it to follow you. If I lay it here on the pulpit, it's going to stay right there. If I, I'm going to demonstrate with our folks at home. If I put it right out here, you see it still sits there. I can motion to it. I can call for it. It's not moving anywhere. It just sits there. I have to put my hand on it and pick it up. You know, I know what you're thinking. You think, boy, if that rock moves, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even stick to you. It, it just stays where it's put. It has to be carried for you to take it. Holding on to it. If you have it in your hand, you are now limited in what you can grasp and how you can interact. If you've got it in your right hand and you're right-handed and somebody asks you to write a note, you have to put it in your other hand to do that. You have to make allowance for carrying that burden, and that is exactly what burdens are like. We have to make allowances for them, and we have to learn how to juggle them to be able to hold on to it. And you say, boy, that sure does sound inconvenient. Yes, it does, doesn't it? But that's what we do with our burdens. God knows, you see, that we are going to try to carry our burdens by ourselves. He knows that. He's seen us do it. Hasn't he? He knows. We could ask someone else to help bear our burden. That wouldn't be a bad thing. Matter of fact, we are encouraged to bear one another's burdens. We find strength in fellowship and shared prayers, don't we? We will try to carry our burdens until we are exhausted from the attempt. And let me give you another little bit of inside information here. Maybe you haven't even thought of this, but if this represents one burden... and you have more than one burden you're trying to carry, that means you need more rocks. Right? <laughs> Remember Forrest Gump? Sometimes you just don't have enough rocks. Well, sometimes, folks, we've got too many of them. And it becomes burdensome until we are exhausted from the attempt to carry them all. So God calls out to us through Jesus and desires that we lay those burdens on him by faith, saying, I choose to trust. Now it's kind of a twofold process, really. You say, well, you know, it, it, it's my job to lay it down. Yes, it is, but there is another part to that. Our part is to surrender it. God's part is to accept it and to take it. That's what God does. This isn't all about us. It's about us laying it down, but God, in partnership with us, picks those burdens up and takes them to himself. The secret to all of this is to do it at the outset and to face the problem early. 
and to lay it down. Now, folks, God knows what that stone represents to you. You're looking at that stone and, and you're listening to what I've said and you're saying, boy, you're right. What does it represent to you? Your habits, your actions, your relationships, attitudes, perspectives, maybe even some prejudices, our sin, our self-service. What about doubt and despair? What about fear and uncertainty? You see, the list is endless of what that stone can represent as a burden in your soul. So here's the question. How will you face the coming year? Will you try to run the race by looking back? Will you stall at the starting gate for fear of failing even before you begin? Or will you, by faith, look to Christ Focus your eyes on him, lay aside your burdens, set your eyes on the finish line, and run the race with everything that lies within you. The choice is yours, you see. Nobody can run the race for you. It's your race to run. Ultimately, we bring our burdens to the cross. Today... Here in the in-person service, here in the sanctuary, we are going to build a stone memorial. We have a table set up here at the front of the sanctuary, and we have a cross on that table. And in just a few moments, I'm going to invite the congregation to come forward and to lay their stone at the foot of the cross. If you are not ready to surrender that burden, I want you to take this stone home with you and hold on to it until you're ready to bring it back. If this table, this table is going to be here for the next two weeks. But eventually the table will be taken down. But no matter what time of year that you decide that you're going to turn that burden over to God, I want you to come and lay it on the altar. You don't have to make a fanfare about it, you'd be surprised how many times throughout the course of the year that I've found a stone lying on the altar when I come in on a Sunday morning. You hold on to that stone till you're ready to give it up. But when you're ready to give it up, do it with your whole heart. What do you need to clear from your hands in order for you to take hold of Christ. For those of you at home, your instructions are simple as well. That stone that you have there with you, whatever that represents to you, I want you to take that stone, and if you can, at all possible, if you can find a body of water, or maybe go out to a wooded area, a fence row, a field, Look at that stone and deliberately throw it away. Give it up. Maybe even close your eyes when you throw it so you don't know where it's going, so you can't go back and find it again. You know, that sounds silly, but how many of us have laid burdens aside and we end up picking them up again? So the decision is yours, and you are given the opportunity of making a fresh start at the beginning of a new year. Amen? Let's pray together. Almighty God, you know our hearts. You know what this stone means and represents to each of us. You've watched us this past year, and Though this stone only represents one, 
or is really only counted by one, it represents a lot of burden. And if we had to carry a stone for every burden that we're bearing, our hands would be full and we would probably be overburdened with the weight. So this morning, Heavenly Father, I ask that through faith in your Son, Jesus, as we have committed ourselves to you and celebrated this time of sacrament together, and now, Lord, we take this opportunity of laying our burdens aside. Help it to touch our soul. Help us, O oh God, to feel the sweet release of burdens lifted as we give them to you without hesitation or any reservation, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. i